What's up guys, welcome to a new video. So today I've got a Q4 strategy to take you through. Um, Q4 is obviously a very exciting time for any e-commerce business owner. Um, that's because in terms of demands, there is no bigger demand throughout the year other than Q4. For obvious reasons as well, we have Christmas coming up. Um, you have certain days, events like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and there's certain things that happen in America, for example, like Thanksgiving, that warrant um, kind of out of the ordinary buying behaviors from consumers. So if you are a beginner somebody looking to get into e-commerce in my opinion there is no better time um, in fact I've documented it in past videos it was actually Q4 2016 in which I was able to make enough money um, to hand in my letter of resignation quit my job um, and do drop shipping full-time ever since so what I thought I would do is put together a strategy um, covering everything from the best sorts of products to sell um, to make use of the short period of time in which we have um, the best kind of Shopify store to sell those products on so whether it's a general niche um, a branded one product store and so on um, and then also a Facebook ad strategy too to make sure you get started off on the right foot on the right track doing the right things so once you've finished watching this video you'll have a very clear view of the process in which you need to go through and when you need to go through it so this is as if you're starting from day one from scratch um, and trying to make the most trying to make the best of the the next um, three or so months, three months and two weeks. And with that being said, guys, there's not a lot more to say. So thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoy it. Um, if you do, please do make sure you leave a like. If you want to see more of my content, please do make sure you subscribe. Um, any comments, questions, video suggestions, whatever it is, um, just post them down below. I read every single one, so I will see it and I will get back to you. Um, and apart from that, let's jump straight into it. So welcome to my Shopify dropshipping Q4 strategy starting from day one. This is a keynote I've put together. I've exported it into a PDF. There are some links and different things um, within the keynote. So if you do want to get your own copy of it for free, that is, you can download it. Just simply head to the first link in the description um, and then you'll get access to all the different links and products, etc. Um, that I show you in this um, particular presentation. So week one to two, this is going to be the product research and store build. This is the time period, the first two weeks in which you're going to take doing these things um, and as it says underneath there these are the three most quality things to take into account when you're going through these first couple of weeks number one is speed um, q4 is obviously a couple of weeks away we want to make sure we get everything set up as quickly as possible so we have as much time as possible to capitalize on those q4 sales it's different supplier to supplier but it's usually kind of the end of november is the cutoff point in which there's no real guarantees um, for Christmas delivery so if you take off those last four weeks essentially you only really have eight to ten weeks to make the most of the increased demand um, number two is quality even though we want to do things fast things need to be of a high standard you cannot put out a poor quality store a poor quality product a poor quality ad it just doesn't work nowadays there's so much competition you need to be doing things better than everybody else and setting yourself apart from the competition I don't believe in saturation I don't believe something can be too saturated all I believe that the more competition there is then the better your game needs to be and thirdly we have trends so you can't build a brand in the space of a couple of weeks unless you can afford to pay Kim Kardashian to promote your product so our focus for this strategy is going to be focusing on those trending products those products that have strong demand today so if you try and sell them today or in the next couple of weeks or next couple of months there's going to be a strong demand and a high chance of success um, of selling them profitably so moving on to the first kind of um, piece of the equation which is obviously the product research you can't build a store or advertise a product until you've decided on a product to actually move forwards with um, as I've already mentioned there's not enough time to build a brand unless you have some serious cash to go around paying some top influencers to promote it so we're going to be focusing on trending impulse buys impulse buy is basically an unplanned decision to purchase a product or service it can happen at any time anywhere so it can be when you're walking down the high street um, and you you see a coffee shop that smells good or you see some sandwich in some sort of window or a bakery or you can be browsing on Facebook browsing on Instagram and you see something you want to buy and you just buy it there and then not a lot of thought just goes into it it's unplanned you see it you want it and then you buy it um, these will sell faster and immediately to give you some extreme examples but they kind of illustrate what an impulse buy is quite nicely um, on the left here we have this bike light it's pretty cool if you were to see this and you were a keen cyclist you would think it was pretty cool if you've never seen it before 
it's only 25 pounds so chances are you're going to take a stab at 25 pounds it's not a lot of money to lose um, if it turns out to be a poor product same thing goes for the led dog collar next to it it's only 15 pounds it's something that pretty much every dog um, owner has so if they were to come across an ad for this for the sake of 15 pounds is it worth them spending half an hour browsing around the internet to try and find it for a couple of quid cheaper um, no it's not the chances are they're just going to see it want it and buy it there and then and then some bad examples again both of these products are indeed available on aliexpress believe it or not and um, we have this water slide in which you can buy for half a million quid so unless you're some sort of billionaire that you, and your kids party is coming up and you've got a garden big enough to put this in the chances are you're not just going to see it there and then and buy it um, a lot of planning a lot of thought a lot of time goes into making a decision like this same thing for a sofa too um, you tend to go around to different stores different shops um, look at different sofas measure them up look at swatches and so on and so forth so an impulse buy to quickly recap is basically something that you see you think is pretty cool you like it it's cheap enough and you just buy it there and then they are the ideal products if you're trying to make money fast some further criteria then on product research um, number one the price um, I've kind of briefly touched on this already, but try and look for products you can sell. And if, I mean, 15 pounds is probably a bit low, um, unless you can find something that's really nice quality for that, but 15 to 50 pounds ish. I've seen people push it to a bit further, that 70, 80, 90, even a hundred pounds. It can depend on what kind of product it is and what kind of audience you're going after. But if you stay somewhere within that sweet spot, then I think you'll be good to go. Um, next up needs to be unique needs to have a unique selling point if it's the sort of product like this sponge holder for example if I zoom in so you guys can see this um, even though it's had two and a half thousand sales on Aliexpress um, there's not really many people out there that get excited when they see an ad about sponge holder so the chances are they're not it's not going to get the attention you need it to um, to do well when you're advertising on a social media platform next thing as well is a specific audience so the focus of this strategy is going to be around Facebook ads Facebook ads in my opinion depending on what kind of products you sell is arguably the best marketing platform um, digital marketing platform purely because you can be super specific with the audiences in which you're going to be targeting and the more specific an audience is the better so for example if I show you this product and zoom in on this so a woman cannot survive on wine alone she also needs a German Shepherd and the reason I chose this is because there's two clear kind of interests in which you can target on Facebook to find um, at your target customer another reason why I like this particular t-shirt so much too is because they haven't just gone for a broad niche and just said um, she also needs a dog it's a German Shepherd so for example somebody who has a German Shepherd a t-shirt like this is going to appeal and they're going to have that connection with a t-shirt like this 10 times more than they would than just a normal dog because they own a German Shepherd so the more specific your product can match your audience the bigger connection there is there um, then the more successful it's always going to be and then the final point which is quite important is it's hard to find in stores now this isn't going to be true of every single product you find but if it is hard to find in stores then it's beneficial because for example this sponge holder you wouldn't have to put two and two together to know you could probably get that on eBay you could probably get that on Amazon whereas with this particular t-shirt over here it's not the sort of thing that when you see it you would immediately go to Amazon and search for wine and German Shepherd t-shirt just do, people's minds don't work like that so the more unique it is the harder it is to find in stores um, the more likely somebody has never seen your products before then the better it's going to perform on a platform like Facebook the third point to finish off is trending so always validate your products by using Google Trends um, for example if you are trying to sell gardening furniture right now in the UK 2004 to present we can see this is on a downward spike the demand for garden furniture is currently falling and it's going to continue to fall for the next few months so you're going to be selling to an audience which is going to be dropping and dropping and dropping whereas if you were to try and sell a bike light we can see in September 2020 UK 2004 to present the search term of bike light has never been more popular in the past 16 years than it is this month so your audience is only going to be increasing and increasing the demand for their products is only going to be increasing and increasing moving on to the next point then which is the time of Shopify store to start so should you start one product store niche or general um, now it's a proven fact that they all work here are three different examples of stores one is a one product store this sonavo shop.com it's a proven seven-figure store it's featured in a past video of mine um, this is high go shop 
um, again, a seven figure proven general store. Again, it's featured in past videos of mine. Um, and then there's a proven seven figure niche store. Um, it's a dog store that's featured in, if I believe not my last video, but perhaps the video before. Um, so the fact is they all work. There are advantages and disadvantages depending on what your product is going to be. In the beginning, my recommendation would always be a general store because it offers the greatest flexibility to test multiple different products over the course of the first couple of weeks. And then if you want to when you find one that sells you could easily transition it into a one product store or into a niche store if um, that would be your um, preferred method go to say but at the end of the day they all work another popular discussion within the dropshipping space then is themes do you need a paid theme um, and again they're not 100 necessary again i can show you numerous examples but for the ones on the screen so this pet boutique they use the free theme which is called debut um, last year i believe they turned over 2.7 million dollars using a free theme so that is proof there you don't need a paid theme in order to succeed now is there a benefit to them in my opinion yes they can make your store look much more professional but you don't need to outlay on a really expensive theme so for example we have Hygo Shop, they use the Debutify theme, which is a paid theme, but it's cheap. Um, and they're able to turn over seven figures annually for it. And then we have Sonavo, which are using a custom theme. So these guys have invested quite a bit of money. But either way, um, it's not going to be the limiting factor to whether you succeed or not. So here are some other things to consider on your Shopify store. Um, in fact, one quick thing before we jump into these, it's not on screen now, but if you're struggling for the design of your store, the way to look, um, the way to make it look, the fonts to use, the color schemes, then what you can do if you download this keynote, the links are included to all of these stores. So you can go across head to there see what their upsells are see what fonts they use see what color schemes they use for example um, and use them as inspiration if you're not quite sure and you're a beginner it's always better to take one of these proven seven figure stores and model your business on theirs so some other things upsells uh, they're the fastest and cheapest way to increase order value and profitability if you don't have them on your store you are losing money you are well, not losing money but you're leaving money on the table um, contact information this is a must all legitimate businesses have them they provide customers that peace of mind they can get hold of you should there be any issues with that order so you need an address you need a telephone number an email address a contact form um, your socials next up we have social proof this will again build that trustworthiness with your customers so you can have order pop-ups so those little kind of pop-ups there's loads of different apps on the shopify store which will do this i believe you can get one for free as well so what it will do is basically pop-ups like an order notification so any visitors will see that there's past customers placing orders um, reviews the more reviews you can get of your site of your business your products then the better um, it's proven that reviews will increase your conversion rate social media content you need to be posting regularly every single day across all platforms if a customer goes onto your social media pages and sees you haven't posted for three months um, then it just doesn't look very good it doesn't even look like you're active it's going to put customers off and if your customers don't trust you then they won't buy from you um, it really is that simple. And then the final point to consider for your store, a lot of people um, try and make their store so special that they overcomplicate it, but just keep it simple and clean. Use a white background, use a black Lato or health Cut font. Don't include any Chinese logos or lettering. It's gonna look suspicious to your customers. And if in doubt, like I mentioned at the beginning, use other stores as inspiration. And final point then before we move on to Facebook ads, which is a really important point in fact, is get feedback before you start advertising. Um, go into Facebook groups and post your store in there if they will let you I do run a free Facebook group that um, anybody is free to go and post their Shopify store in so check out the link in the video description um, ask friends and family that you know will give you an honest opinion and honest constructive criticism to help you genuinely improve your store the reason being is because it doesn't matter how good a quality your product is how good your ads are if somebody doesn't trust your store they're not going to buy from you period it really is that simple so with that being said they're moving into week three and onwards this is when we're going to be focusing purely on marketing and facebook ads the two most important points being here are quality and being extensive being thorough so quality is really important because with a poor ad you're not going to get the attention on social media there's so much competition on social media not just for other people selling the same products but when your product when your ad appears on somebody's news feed it's not just other people selling the same products in which you're competing against you're competing against the pages that 
they follow. You're competing against their friends and family that are also posting on their news feeds. You're posting against the meme page. You're competing against apps on their phone that send them notifications. You're competing against their friends, sending them text messages. Your ad needs to be the highest quality possible. So even when they do get that text, then they ignore it because they want to watch your ad. They want to go to your store and see what the product is, see more information. Next point being extensive, being thorough. The more you test and the more successful you will be, it really is that simple. There's not a single Shopify store I have found through all of my research that is successful that doesn't have 10 different variations of different ads running at a time just so they can see what works and then focus and narrow down on what is working. And this is how I have based and designed this strategy. This is the strategy I myself, when I'm testing different products against each other, this will be the exact strategy I use every single time. So on the off look, it may look a bit complicated, but I'm gonna take you through it now and break it down exactly how it does work. Um, feel free to pause and rewind the video if needs be, or like I said, you can download this keynote and get this um, get a copy of this yourself sorry so the way it's going to work is we're going to be running a conversion campaign per product in which we want to test so if you have five products you want to test you're going to use five conversion campaigns within each conversion campaign is going to be five different ad sets and then each ad set is going to be three creatives now these three creatives that you create they can be different videos they can be different images they can be different script descriptions they can be different headlines the most important thing is that they are different but they can be the same three creatives per ad set so just need to make sure you have at least three completely different creatives and then each of those can fall under each individual ad set so essentially you have three creatives five ad sets and one conversion campaign it's really important you don't skip this step um, or narrow it down to say two ad sets and only one creative because the slightest different thing whether it's the use of emojis versus not use of emojis whether it's a different call to action whether it's a different hook at the stop in, at the top sorry of your description these can make all the differences between a successful ad and not a successful ad so you're much better off test increasing on top of this rather than decreasing so if you can afford to go to six ad sets seven ad sets go to four five six creatives but this as a very minimum per product in terms of the targeting criteria of each ad set then everything is going to be exactly the same until we get to the actual detail tags and section the interests in which we pick so to start off at the top everything is going to be a conversion objective um, target of purchase it's going to be 18 to 65 male to female we want to go broad in terms of the demographics if we're advertising products we've never sold before you might be surprised by who actually buys it we're going to go for newsfeed and marketplace marketplace is a great placement to put your ads in People are in the marketplace because they're looking to spend money, not necessarily on your products, but getting people in that frame of mood is half the battle when you're advertising on a social media platform. So when you're advertising in the marketplace, you're already targeting and advertising to those people who are in that buy mood. This next step then is where things are going to change per different ad set. So we're going to use engaged shoppers as one of the detail tags in sections. Then I want you to hit narrow audience and then the interest in which you put in that box is going to be different per ad set. So for example, if we're going to be selling a dog product, ad set one could be dogs narrowed with engaged shoppers. Ad set number two could be dog walking narrowed with engaged shoppers, ad set number three, different interest narrowed with engaged shoppers and so on. The reason with engaged shoppers is because we wanna be targeting those people who are most likely to buy from Facebook ads to give us the best chance of success in the beginning. This is all about testing, this is all about finding what works and by using engaged shoppers, we're more likely to see those initial sales come back. Even though the CPMs will be slightly more expensive, to see those sales come in initially is a great indication of whether a particular audience is a good one or not. And then we can further explore it if needs be. The key differentiating factor here is going to be the audience size, so the actual interest in which you narrow with. Try and keep it between 250K and 1 million. If you go up to 2 million, it's not the end of the world. This is just kind of like a ballpark number. The most important thing is it's a different interest all the time. And what this is going to do is it's going to make sure that the overall audience size in which you're going to be targeting is going to be varied from ad set to ad set. And the reason this is so important when it comes to Facebook ads is because there's no golden rules 
that there's no one who can go out on YouTube and say 1 million is the best audience size for every single niche, 2 million is the best audience size, 250K is the best audience size. It just doesn't exist. Different things are gonna work for different people with different creatives and different products. And this is why I've designed this strategy to be like this, because it tests everything. It tests all the different audience sizes, it tests all the different interests, it tests all the different creatives, it tests all the different demographics. So this is all about running this as a test for three days minimum the more the better because then the more data you'll have and then once you've finished running this test for three four five six seven days depending on what your budget is then you can pause it all and start breaking down the content looking at the breakdown see what demographics converted best see what audience size converted best see what interest converted best and then when you have that information instead of running three pound per day for each ad set you can increase your budget to say 10 pound today on what's working and then when that starts to work, increase it to 15 pound per day, 20 pound per day, and just build it there. And then that way, you're gonna be laser focusing your budget and doubling down on what's working, and that's how you scale it. Just to finish the video off then, um, here are some interesting links. So if you do download the keynote, they'll go really well hand in hand with this particular keynote. So there is a link here for a video um, I produce, which will show you, demonstrate step-by-step -step how to find trending products. Um, I've got a video for five trending product ideas, so you could even skip the product research and go straight to one of these particular products. I've got a video on how to find those Facebook ad interests to use for this strategy. Um, and then I've also got a free Facebook group, which I've already mentioned, which you can join for free. You can post your store in there for feedback. And then I've also got some free Shopify eBooks to best tips on Facebook ads, your Shopify store products, um, and all those sorts of things. And with that finally being said then guys, thank you very much for watching. I really do hope you enjoyed it. And most importantly, got some value for it. Please do make sure you actually put it into action and then come back and tell me what sort of results you got. Um, and then one final thing then before you go, if you are looking for a program which will show you how to build a profitable and successful business on Shopify dropshipping that comes with my full support and guidance, please do check out my Ecom Academy. It comes with all the things you see on your screen now plus a ton more. So head down into the description, check out the link, check out the info. Um, there is a callback service too. So if you wanna hop on the phone with me, go through any questions you want before joining then we can do so as well apart from that have a great day thank you again for watching um, and i'll see you in the next video